Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. So I am absolutely shocked. I've received a lot of requests to go over my PhD application that I would have now turned in two years ago. So for those of you who are new, I am a PhD student in biology at Harvard University through the Biological and Biomedical Sciences PhD program, also known as BBS. And I applied to grad school two years ago, so I really haven't thought about my application since then. But you asked, and I listened. So I'm going to bring it up from the dead and talk to you about my application. So I applied to eight programs, seven programs? I'll just count. The two Harvard programs, UC Merced, UC Irvine, Stanford, MIT, and UCLA. And as you can tell from that list, I really wanted to stay in California. So the way things turned out was qu quite a shock, but I had lived in Boston before and I decided that was a place I would have loved to go to graduate school outside of California. So I decided to apply. So I don't wanna waste any of your time. I just wanna remind you all that every application is very different and every application has strengths and weaknesses. So I'm gonna be talking about certain parts of my application. You'll be able to tell which ones were stronger than others, but just because your application doesn't look like that doesn't mean you're not gonna get in. Like really, calm down. Let's breathe together. Take a brief deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Okay, so to start off with the basics, every PhD application asks their prospective students a few things. First, there's the basic data, what school did you go to, all of that. They ask you about your research experience, which is the most important part of the application because you're applying to a research degree. They ask you about publications, whether you presented at conferences, things like that. They'll ask you if you won any awards, honors, and whether you held any jobs or had any volunteer experience. They will also ask you for, at the very least, a statement of purpose. It's different than a personal statement. A personal statement is about you, and a statement of purpose is about your research. It's called the statement of purpose because it's asking, what is your purpose in applying to this program? But you, it's basically you talking about why you're qualified. So throughout this video, I'm gonna be covering what my stats were and what my general theme was for my application. So. Let's get started. So I graduated in 2017 from Pitcher, Pitzer, ah, Pitzer College. I got a Bachelor of Arts because it's a liberal arts school, so that school doesn't in particular let me get a Bachelor of Science, but I did take a bunch of science courses while I was there, but very well balanced with the liberal arts curriculum. I majored in biology and got honors, which I was so excited about, and I also got a minor in chemistry. Most schools don't care about your minors, like really. I just loved chemistry, so. So in terms of GPA, I may have mentioned before, I didn't do super well in high school. So I really went hard in college to make sure that I learned as much as possible. And that's the mindset I went in with. I just want to learn. So thankfully, all of that studying did pay off for me. And at the time of my application, I had a 3.91 GPA in my biology major and a 3.93 GPA overall. It was physics that brought the GPA down. Something to also keep in mind is that GPA is factoring in other classes that I took from other universities. So the summer right after my first year, I actually took both semesters of biology at Boston University, full year in one summer. Please don't do that to yourself, I don't recommend it. And I also studied abroad my sophomore year, but my GPA doesn't include those classes. So in terms of the GRE, I took the GRE the October before my application was due, so that same season, and I got 92nd percentile in the verbal, got 82nd percentile in the math, and 98th percentile in the writing section. I was absolutely shocked when I got my math score because I was pretty sure I bombed it and I have bombed math in the past, like my SAT. I don't even think I scored above 20th percentile when I took the math. So it was proof that I had grown. So yeah, those are my basic statistics. Now on to research experience, which is way more important. So this was actually, interestingly enough, one of the weaker parts of my application. I had a combined total of four and a half months of research experience at the time I applied. The reason I don't think this actually negatively affected me too much is because I had a reason for that. 
At my school, you don't get paid to do research, and as a student who really needed to hold a job during college, I did other things, which I'm going to talk about later. But it was pretty much impossible to do research and take my classes and work jobs, so I mentioned that in my application. So four and a half months of combined research experience. I had two summers of research. The first summer was the summer right between my sophomore and junior years, and I did research at UC Merced. That was a metabolism project, and I really enjoyed the work, and it was the first time I was ever exposed to research, so obviously it kept me going. So then the next summer, I did research actually here at Harvard. I spent 13 weeks there and actually wrote my thesis on the work that I did there, and I absolutely loved it. And that's about it. Yeah not that much experience. Most applicants have way more experience than I do. Um, even if they're coming straight out of undergrad like I did, usually they will have been in a lab like throughout their college experience. And uh, a lot of people also took two years off at least to uh, be a technician in a lab or work on projects before they came into graduate school. That being said, I really miss doing lab work while I was taking all my classes and working and such and I loved talking about my work, so I went out of my way to go to conferences. And that actually transitions us into the next part, which is essentially like science communication, publications, conferences, talks, etc. So I think this was actually one of the most important parts of my application. I gave several talks at conferences because I really missed just talking about my research. If I remember correctly, I gave two presentations at SACNAS, one for my first research opportunity, one for my second. And for my first research opportunity, I also gave two presentations at the Experimental Biology Conference. In addition to that, um, I was so lucky and I was invited to actually go to a meeting that NSF put together related to my first fellowship. And they invited me to talk about my perspective on how to diversify science and make it more accessible for students, since I had had a lot of experience with coming from a background that didn't really prepare me well for science. And then I guess succeeding by their standards. So I did have one publication, but it wasn't really significant. It wasn't like in a big tier journal or anything. And I was like, second to last author, which means I contributed the least on the manuscript, but it was still cool to have one. Then I think to what really tipped the scales in my favor for the application. I love talking, especially in person, about science. Like honestly, once you get me started on talking, I like won't stop, so beware. And I think that people at the conferences were able to sense my enthusiasm for things and how enthusiastic I was not just about my science, but about science culture as a whole and how I wanted to make it more accessible. So for every presentation that I presented, except for I think my last SACNAS conference, I actually won presentation awards. I won a presentation award for my first SACNAS presentation, um, both my experimental biology presentations, one of which was specific to comparative physiology, and I got first place for that, which I'm very grateful for. So in addition to that, I won travel awards to go to the SACNAS conference, and in addition to that, I won the Goldwater Scholarship, which is seen as one of the most prestigious scholarships in STEM for undergraduates. The cool thing is I won that after a year of doing lab work, so did not expect that. But anyway, I think it helped tip the scales in my favor. Also, they'll ask if you applied for fellowships, and I did. I applied for NSF and Ford, and even though like by the time your application is in and you hear back, they won't know if you got it or not, I think they really appreciate that you applied for it because it means that maybe they'll have more money to apply, admit more people. So I think that was really the strong part of my application that distinguished me. I also think the theme of my application was not only science and spreading science and making it more accessible, was, but was also how I'm able to interact with community. My overall goal is to be a professor, so I demonstrated my ability to work with different kinds of students. So now for the jobs that I worked that I tried to demonstrate that with. First of all, I was an RA for one and a half years of my college experience. First semester sophomore year, and then I went abroad, and then all of junior year. And during that, I worked in an upper class mental hall, so I was 
helping students through a lot of stress, especially spring semester after grades would come out and then when people were worried about graduation and stuff. In addition to that, I was a TA for cell bio for one semester and I tutored a bunch of different biology stuff like organic chemistry, genetics, and biostatistics. And finally, when I was a senior, so just as I was applying, I had already accepted a commitment for a year at the Writing Center. So I was working at the Writing Center where I was helping people with their essays, especially in science, their lab reports, and as well as fellowships. And I was a Fulbright consultant, which meant that I worked with the Fulbright applicants to try and help them win the fellowship. So Also, I volunteered with this organization called SACNAS. It wasn't super active, but my role in it was really to try and get as many people as possible to the conference because it was the SACNAS conference that first really opened my eyes to what research was like and made me even consider it. All right, now to the big guns. I think the statement of purpose is one of the most important parts of the application because you can be this accomplished person, but like, why are you applying to this school in particular? And why are you applying for a PhD now? Something that was really important to me was to talk about my story from a research context. So I think I had a lot of interesting things to share like on my personal note, but this essay is not the place for it. It's all about what led you up to where you are today and why are you applying here now? So I did talk about when I was a child and how I grew up watching my grandmother develop type 2 diabetes and how I was really confused because I knew that diabetes ran in my family, um, but like when I was five, I didn't really have a strong understanding of like the fact that DNA could influence things, you know? Like I knew DNA was heritable, thank you Jurassic Park. I didn't know you could get diseases from misregulation and all of that. So I talked about how I was confused because I thought it was a blood sugar disorder, but my mom would tell me that it is actually very prevalent in the Mexican community, in the Mexican American community, and how I became very inspired by that. And to actually understand how genetics can lead to an entire metabolic disorder that is very deadly and known as a silent killer. And then from there, I transitioned and talked about my first research experience where I was working with northern elephant seal pups and studying their metabolism. Then I talked talked about what I actually learned from the experience being in the lab separate from my research and how, you know, it was my first research experience so I learned about how important hypothesis driven research is. Then next, I kind of did the same thing as I did for the first research experience but I did it with my second. So first I talked about what I actually worked on and showed that I know how to talk about my science and then talked about what I learned from it. Then I reserved a paragraph to talk about where I wanted to go next and why it was very important for me and what it was about Harvard specifically or like whatever school I was applying to specifically that I liked and like that's another thing apply to schools you actually like like there's no point in applying to 20 bajillion schools especially because each application is very individualized for every school I applied to I knew I would actually enjoy my time there so I talked about what it was that I liked about it and what I liked about that program specifically, not just the school in the area. And then finally, I just tied it off talking about my goals, wanting to be a professor and to diversify science and make it more accessible to different communities. And yeah, that was it. I mean, I think the hard part about applying for a PhD program is that you don't really have a common app, so it's not like college or even med school, for example, where you just write the same essay and then they'll ask you for individualized essays later. No, you just have to fill out your name and address and phone number over and over and over again. So yeah, and pretty much the last thing about the applications, obviously the letter of recommendation. I never saw mine, so I can't say anything about the strength of them. So the End results. I didn't get interviews to MIT and UCLA. That's not something to take personally. Like, it's okay. It doesn't mean your application was bad. It just means they didn't think you were like a good fit for the program for whatever reason, either research or your goals, like they wouldn't be able to help you, things like that. Then I got interviews to both Harvard programs, Stanford, UCLA, and UC Merced, and I got into all of them. I did six interviews in seven weeks. And that off week, I had to take a midterm. So that was complicated, but it was really fun. 
It's actually interesting because before interviews, I thought that Stanford was going to be my top school because I really liked the northern central area because I'd been there before. And it was in California, which I know I love. I'd be able to bring my car, etc. And actually, interesting enough, the Boston schools were like my last choice schools. Not that you know, they sucked because they didn't, but like moving to Boston as a Californian, like you'd really have to sell me on that. And the way things ended up, my program, Harvard BBS, really sold me on it. I knew I was gonna fit right in. Thank you all for watching. Um, I've never really done a video like talking about myself as much. So I hope any of you found it helpful. And if you did find it helpful, like the video, uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and share, because who knows, maybe other people will find it helpful as well. So yeah, as usual, also, if there's anything you want me to cover, just leave it in the comment section below. This video was a result of people request, so I'm always happy to take a look and get new topics to work on. Happy application season! <laughs>